So why are you so addicted to borderlines, narcissists? Why are you so attracted to them? Why are you so addicted to them? And worse, why are you incapable of leaving, even if you know they're bad for you? Hi, this is Mike, and this is The One Thing That Heals BPD and NPD Abuse. I just came out with a new book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend. You can get it on Amazon Kindle. It'll also be on Audible when it uh, gets approved. So this is really probably, I, I don't know, perhaps the most important issue there is. Look, you can come onto my channel. You can go watch as many videos and YouTube channels trying to understand what is going on with your borderline girlfriend. And the truth is, no matter how much information you get, you still can't leave. Even if you do leave, I can't tell you how many times I see this. I said this, but I see it in the comments all the time. She's gone now. I just hope that when she comes back, I'll have the strength not to go back with her. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go back with her. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say no. You know what? I'm never going to go back. And then they come back and they say, yeah, I went, I, I got back with her again. I remember doing that. I remember saying out loud as the phone was ringing and I could see it was her. I remember saying out loud, I am not going to get back together with her. I'm not going to answer the phone. Hello? Hi. Oh, you want to come over? Okay, bye. You just can't resist them. So why is that? Okay, let's start with something you may have not heard of before, which is called transference. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. It was really impactful for me when I learned what transference was. We know what projection is. Projection is pretty obvious. You project onto other people what you can't look at in yourself. You can also project positive things. You can project love onto people, which is really what you want for yourself. We'll talk about that in a second. But transference is a really nifty little thing that uh, is what happens when you first meet your borderline. So when you first meet your borderline and you know what, what they're like, they, they definitely target you. They, they come at you and they come at you with all of that cute, beautiful, vulnerable, sexy, uh, you know what, you know the vibe. They come at you with all of that and they come at you hard. And they, you know, I remember my borderline telling me, you know, almost from the very beginning, I know you're the one for me. I'm, I'm intuiting it and my intuition is always right and you are the man for me. You're my next partner. And while I went, oh, that's interesting. We'll see if that's true. The truth is, is to be talked to like that from somebody that's, you know, that beautiful and sexy. Oh, yeah, she's a little bit crazy, but that's kind of hot. Um, that uh, really kind of hooked me into it, into her. And what ends up happening when they give you all of that love, they give you all of that love, the love that the kind of love that they're giving you, where they see you at the deepest level. This is your experience. You feel like you've been seen for the first time on the deepest level, like they can look right into your soul. And they do. And not, not only that, but they love you. They just, just gush all of this love and acceptance and nurturing on you. And it's it's absolutely amazing. It's, it's, you've never experienced anything like it. And it, be, it is incredibly addicting. The, the truth is, is that you experience her when she's doing that. You experience her as being authentic and being uh, honest. And truth is, in her mind, she is. She's not lying about any of that. Her feelings are absolutely honest. You know, what? as I'm explaining to you, she's doing the same thing. So what you end up doing is you transfer onto her. You transfer, like, you know, you transfer funds from one bank account to another. You literally transfer unresolved 
feelings that you have for your mother, unresolved. You have within you a storehouse of complete, total love that you have for your mother that you never got to experience. Because if you're with a borderline or a narcissist, I'm here to tell you that, you know, for whatever reason, you did not get the love that you wanted from your mother. But all infants are wired to have this absolutely all-encompassing, unbelievable love for their mother. They are wired that way. That's what keeps them alive. So you didn't get that. That doesn't mean that that love goes away. It stays there waiting to be expressed until somebody comes along that stimulates it. And nobody stimulates it like a borderline. And when you feel that you're being seen and loved totally, what is that? That is the feeling an infant has when the mother is looking into the infant's eyes. A healthy mother is wired to do this. A healthy mother is wired to look at the infant and say, this is the most beautiful, the most unique being that has ever existed. This child is more precious than any that have ever come before. And they have that look in their eyes when they hold the child, kiss the child, they, you know, and the child sees that. They see in the mother's eyes. I see you. You are the best. You are the most unique. You are the most beautiful. And you are my ultimate. The, the infant sees that. That's exactly what a borderline does when they're love bombing you. Now, the, they do mean it in the moment that they're doing it. And so what ends up happening is that button in you gets pushed, maybe for the first time. You've been in a lot of relationships. You've been in a lot of dysfunctional relationships. But you've never had somebody look at you like that, give you that feeling and turn that switch on. And what it is, it's an, a very old infantile feeling. And once that gets turned on, you take it away from your mother and you put it onto the borderline. You transfer an existing feeling. That's why when you do it, it feels like I've known you for many lifetimes, right? You both have that experience. We're soulmates from many lifetimes before. This is like, I've known you my whole life. Well, you have. Your whole life, you've had this feeling in you, waiting to be given to your mother. This feeling of you and I are bonded. We have this infinite connection because that's how infants feel. That's how mothers feel. You have that. Your borderline turned it on. You went, okay, I'll put it on you instead. This is called transference. Now, can you understand why it's impossible to leave? It's not that anything that you have in your conscious, rational mind is going to overcome that survival instinct. Remember, as I've said many times, it's been proven over hundreds of years that if you deny an infant love, attention, intimacy, uh, interaction, physical touch, they will die even if you give them food, clothing, and shelter. So this is why your survival instinct has been turned on you can't walk away from that. You can't go tell yourself, you know what? She's no good for me. I, I have to leave. You have this innate nervous system DNA thing that says, no, this is my source to infinity. And you transfer all of that onto your borderline girlfriend, which from then on, it means she can do anything she wants and you will be powerless to leave her. So this is called transference. You see that in the bottom right there. What about projection? Well, projection up there right under her right eye there, projection. That's obvious. Projection is you project onto somebody else what you cannot or will not look at within yourself. Now, most of us are familiar with projection in terms of negativity, right? When your borderline uh, wakes up in the morning and for no reason looks at you and starts telling you, 
you know, all these horrible things that you're thinking and you're doing that you haven't done. And you're like, what? I I never once thought that. Yes, you did. I can see it in your eyes. You said last night, you said this one word and they'll take something out of context that you said, you know, in the middle of some conversation. And you're like, what? And they start telling you how horrible you are, how you have... Uh, planned on their demise, you're trying to destroy them, how selfish you are, how abusive you are. Well, that is called projection. And it's obvious you've been there. They're projecting onto you what is exactly going on inside of them. You know, this, you, you see this even in, you know, not so intensely dysfunctional relationships, just somebody who cheats. You can tell you're with somebody who cheats. One of the ways is that they'll grab your phone and they'll start looking to see, who are you texting? I know you're texting somebody. Who is it? You're cheating on me, aren't you? Who is that? Who is that? They're all constantly getting into your phone, checking your email. Well, that's something, I mean, paranoid people do that as well. But one of the people that uh, is known to do that are people who cheat because they're projecting. They're projecting onto you what they're doing and they're unwilling or unable to look at it. This can also be positive. You didn't know that, did you? You thought love was beautiful and wonderful whenever you felt it, which is why you feel so victimized. Because you say to yourself, all I did was love her. Well, what if your love was a projection? Let me explain. So your borderline girlfriend comes to you and in that first weekend when she is just the ultimate love kitten that just you never experienced anything like this in your entire existence and oh my god I can't live without this woman when that happens she is she is transferring and projecting onto you what she wants so Let's take a look at ourselves by looking at her, because that's easier for us to do, to look at them first. When she's love bombing you, this is a projection in the beginning. What she does later, the love bombing that comes later is different. The first time that she falls in love with you, and that intense love that she has for you, is a projection. What it is, is that she's telling you, she's showing you on an unconscious level, what she wants you to do to her. So she's loving you, and I can remember this. My borderline, that first, you know, infatuation that she had for me, she loved me absolutely, totally, completely. She loved everything about me. She loved everything about my body, even if it was, you know, a little bit too much fat here or didn't have enough hair or whatever it was that was the thing that was perfect about me no i've always wanted a guy who had just a little too much weight here and didn't have this and was older than me you know i wanted exactly what you are even the things that aren't perfect those are the things that i love most about you that's a projection she's projecting onto me what she wants me to feel about her What she wants, now she's not aware of this, but what ends up happening is that you feel this intense love and you think it's for the other person, but it's not. It's actually love that you have for yourself. But because it is so painful, if you were to acknowledge that, oh my God, I am so empty inside, What I want more than anything is for somebody to mother me unconditionally like I was an infant. The the knowledge of that is so intense, you can't tolerate looking at it. It's also not acceptable. As an adult, you can't have that kind of love and be accepted in society. So you shove it down, you push it down, it gets lodged in the unconscious, and it resurfaces as Your experience is a feeling that you have for somebody else, but it's not for somebody else. It's for you, but you can't do that for yourself. You need somebody else to do it. So you project it. So she projected onto you all of the ways she wanted you to love her and you bought it. You, the hook went right in and you bought it. And once she 
uh, love bombed you that first time and then discarded you, it flipped on the switch and now you project onto her. You do everything that she did to you and you think that you're actually wanting this love to get inside of her. Think about this one. You want your love to go deep inside of her. You want your love to go in and melt her heart and to make her feel safe and feel loved. That's actually what you want for yourself and you're projecting it onto her. So this is projection. This is another reason why you can't leave because you get off, you literally, all of the, the you know, the feel good chemicals in the brain go off. Those, those things get stimulated in you as you are projecting onto your borderline girlfriend. And if you can't get them to love you, at least you can vicariously experience your own feelings of love for them. You're still experiencing love, even though none of it's coming to you. So this is another reason that you're addicted. And then last, we've got mommy issues down there uh, on the bottom left. And I think I've pretty well shown you that this is mommy issues. Your projection, your transference, it's mommy issues. The bottom line is you can't leave your borderline girlfriend, not because you love her, but because you love yourself. And that is normal. Unfortunately, the strategy that your unconscious is unleashing on you, which is to be, uh, to be transferring your unresolved love for your mom onto your borderline, to be projecting onto her what you want somebody to do for you, is not going to give you what you want. It is infantile and it's old stuff. And the bottom line is you think you love her, you don't. You already know now you've been hurt and damaged. You know she doesn't really love you. She's mentally ill and she doesn't have a clue what she's doing. And, you know, all the negative has nothing to do with you. And now you realize all of the positive that she had for you also had nothing to do with you. It was all about her own narcissistic uh, thing. Now, you don't have um, a uh, personality disorder, but guess what? Your love for her is purely narcissistic projection and transference. And that's why you can't leave. You can heal. There is a way to completely separate and be completely healed from the pain. I talk about it in my book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend. You can go find it on Amazon Kindle. And uh, when uh, it gets approved, you'll find it on audiobooks.thunderwizard.com. All right, guys. See you soon.